Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight for GSBA's Civic Engagement Series. Uh, I want to start off by thanking our sponsors for making this programming possible tonight. I want to thank the Economic Development Alliance of Skagit County, the Inland Northwest, Inland Northwest Business Alliance, and then the Spectrum Center of Spokane as our co-presenters tonight. GSBA, uh, the Economic Development Alliance of Skagit County, IMBA, and the Spectrum Center are all nonpartisan organizations. And while we all take active roles on issue advocacy, we do not endorse candidates. You can watch this recording and the rest of our civic engagement programs on Facebook or at thegsba.org slash advocacy. Uh, ballots have been mailed to all Washington voters. They should be in your hands as of today. Uh, please vote all the way down your ballots and return them as soon as you can. Uh, you can visit votewa.gov for more information, find out where a ballot drop box is, and uh, look at the status of your ballot. And of course, we have our Secretary of State candidates coming up. I'm sure that uh, they can tell you more about that and the importance of your vote this year. Uh, I'm very proud tonight to introduce our exceptional moderators. Uh, we have Lucretia Lou Hill, uh, who is the board president of Spectrum LGBTQIA 2S Plus Center uh, in Spokane uh, and a business owner in Eastern Washington with a professional history in nonprofits and in philanthropy. And joining Lou, we have John Sternlich. CEO of the Economic Development Alliance of Skagit County, uh, and he has also served in economic development leadership roles for King County and the state of Virginia, including serving as Virginia's Deputy Secretary of Commerce and Trade. Uh, he has served on the boards of the International Economic Development Council, the Anacortes Arts Festival, Skagit Valley College Foundation, Equality Virginia, and also GSBA. So welcome, Lou and John. I'll let you do a uh, Brief introductions and we'll head right into the candidates. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having us. Uh, today we will start with the candidates for Lieutenant and Governor, then candidates for Secretary of State, and then we'll finish with Justice Montoya Lewis. As a reminder, all the organizations associated with tonight's event are nonpartisan. All candidates for each position Ooh. were invited, but not all were able to, to join us tonight. Thank you very much. Thanks, Lou and Matt. Welcome, everybody. Uh, the questions have been prepared by the GSBA and the co-sponsoring organizations. And for the sake of uh, ease and preparation and fewer anxieties, have been shared with the candidates in advance of tonight's event. As the candidates know, they will have two minutes to respond to each question and we will alternate as to who goes first. So with that, the first race we have to focus on is that of the Secretary of State. And we have the two candidates here, Secretary of State Kim Wyman and Representative Gail Tarleton. Welcome to both of you. Hello. Uh, the first you. question, <laughs> thank you. The first question and um, we will start I don't, I don't see it written down here, but let's start with Secretary of State Wyman. With the Secretary of State's office in charge of corporations and charities, how can the office continue to keep up with modern business practices and improve how it serves our small businesses and our nonprofits? First, Secretary of State Wyman. Uh, well, thank you so much for uh, putting together tonight's uh, event. And uh, in terms of continuing to serve our corporation customers uh, more effectively, I think it's really building on the modernization we've done over the last four, really probably eight years. Uh, first and foremost, updating our system so that you can now do your transactions in a much more efficient manner. Uh, trans transactions that quite frankly used to take between weeks and days to complete. Now you can do hopefully in minutes uh, and at most in an hour and really reducing the time it takes you to do business 
uh, and then reducing the fees that were associated. One of the things I'm really proud of is that we were able to eliminate the uh, filing fee for annual reports. And that saved over $5 million for businesses across our, our state and really trying to do those types of innovations into the future and listening to our customers and figuring out what uh, meets their needs best. Uh, I'll give you an example. I was so excited about the new system the, uh, the corporation's uh, filing system that I was talking to one of the business owners that uh, is in Bellevue and he files all of his with checks. And so I was so excited that you could do everything online and, and in this very uh, you know great seamless uh, method with uh, credit cards only to find out that you know he was old school and wanted to continue to use checks. So you know we we just really try to listen to our customers and and find out what are the things that are slowing you down and uh, need to what you need to do to make your business easier. Um, I'm glad we did it because during the COVID crisis we had a lot of businesses that needed to get documentation for PPP loans. And we were able to really expedite those services in a way that got out of the way of our business owners and the business community. So just mainly continuing to do that type of um, service. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Wyman. Uh, Representative Gail Tarleton. Uh, Representative Tarleton, would you like me to repeat the question or do you have it? Uh, no, that's fine, John. Uh, thank you to all of the sponsors for this great event. And uh, of course, people are voting right now. And so we hope that uh, they have an opportunity to take a look at their ballot, take a look at their voter pamphlet statement as, as we have uh, told so many people over the course of the last uh, few weeks, as our county elections directors are telling us uh, as well, have a vote plan. Don't wait till the last minute. Don't pull an all-nighter. And it's sort of the same way when you're talking about corporations and, and nonprofit organizations, charitable organizations. You don't want to wait till the last minute. Uh, sometimes waiting till the last minute means a, an important IPO doesn't happen, or it means that you haven't been able to change the registration of your business in order to be able to open online, uh, not just a physical presence. As a legislator, I have worked really hard uh, with the Department of Revenue, the Secretary of State's office to examine how we need to restructure uh, the business licensing and registration uh, financial situation so that not only are we ensuring that we have revenues coming in that fund the customer service operations of the Secretary of State's office and the Department of Revenue, but that we are enabling the different operations of the small businesses in this state uh, to be able to open additional operations and additional stores without paying an additional licensing fee. And so we got that, that improvement, that real change into law this past session, where now you only have to have one business license for up to six franchises. Coming through this pandemic and the economic crisis, this will help our many small businesses in so many neighborhoods figure out how they can stagger reopening and recovery in different parts of their community or in different parts of the state. I think we need a whole new thinking about modernizing and customer service solutions in the technology arena uh, as business registration licenses and operations evolve after this pandemic. I do see across the state, uh, certain industries, the tourism industry is having a tremendously difficult time. Let's work on that. Thank you, Representative Charlton. Over to you, Lou. Thank you. It can feel like the rule of law is being challenged from the top down, especially around elections. The idea that our gover government governors for all governs for all people has slipped in some areas. How strong are the safeguards around our election laws and practices? Uh, Rep Representative Tartleton, you're first. Thank you. Our elections have been under attack uh, since seven months, eight months ago when our president started attacking our US Postal Service, attacking the legitimacy of vote by mail. And since 2016, when we were informed by the intelligence community and the Department of Homeland Security that Russians were interfering in our 2016 elections. And there have been recurrent warnings, observations going on right now, even as we speak, that Russians are interfering, they're it, big Microsoft stories about how Microsoft has been taking down TrickBot and other networks uh, being run out of Russia and through other networks. Uh, the rule of law 
is an, under attack. It is at stake. And our elections are under attack because we are a rule of law country. Our elections are under attack because we are ruled by the voice of the people. And that is a threat to Putin. And apparently it's a threat to our own president. And in 43 years of voting, I have never believed that our own president would be attacking our right to vote and our democracy, but he has been. And it's been going on for seven months. The things we control are this. States and local jurisdictions control elections. We control the ballot boxes. We control the processing of ballots. All elections are run by states and local jurisdictions. The federal government doesn't. That is one element that makes our elections most safe and most secure. The second one is paying attention to the infrastructure of our elections. I have long advocated as a national security expert that our elections are critical infrastructure. And our Secretary of State opposed designating our elections as critical infrastructure in 2016. And here we are, our elections infrastructure is in fact under attack. The equipment, the networks, the voter files, because that's how you undermine the integrity of our democracy. We need to secure our elections infrastructure. We are doing everything we can as a legislature to make sure that our networks are safe and secure and every voter has a voice in their democracy and having their vote counted as they cast it. Thank you. Secretary Wyman. Could, real quick, could you repeat the, the first part of the question? I can't remember it, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It can feel like the rule of law is being challenged from the top down, especially around elections. The idea that our government, government governs for all people has slipped in some areas. How strong are the safeguards around our elections laws and practices. Thank you, Lou. Uh, yes, here in Washington State, I'm really proud to tell you that uh, first and foremost, the way that I've approached uh, being Secretary of State and County Auditor before that is really having an um, impartial approach to the job and, and overseeing our elections in that manner. And so I'm proud to tell you that we've built uh, really the, the leading system in the country. It's the most inclusive, it's the most accessible, and it's the most secure. And that's come from decades of really working to expand uh, mail-in voting access and, and really why the country has turned to us and asked us for ideas and help and sharing procedures and processes that will help expand that accessibility across the country and build in the compensating controls to go with that. And, and certainly the election system, uh, you know, administrative processes like elections and the postal service have been under attack by the president and the attorney general, U.S. attorney general. And so, you know, what we're really trying to do here in Washington is uh, inspire confidence in our voters that our elections are well run. And we've spent the last four years working with federal partners and state partners to strengthen our cybersecurity here in Washington State. We created the first in the country election security operations center that really is um, taking our partners at the federal level from Department of Homeland Security and their CISA unit to our own Washington National Guard who has uh, some of the best cyber minds in the country uh, testing our system, training our, not only the workers in my office, but county election officials from across the state on ways to protect our system, strengthening our firewalls, having really good monitoring systems to make sure that we're keeping the bad actors out and, and monitoring activity that looks suspect. And we've uh, engaged with our Microsoft partners, in fact, in those same endeavors. So it, it's really about comprehensive security, but also balancing that out with access so that every voter in the state who's eligible has an opportunity to register and vote. Thank you. To you, John. Okay. Uh, we'll start again with Secretary of State Wyman. Um, how are you preparing uh, Secretary Wyman for any challenge to the validity of our Washington vote by mail system? Oh, you know, this is something that we have continuously done since Washington moved to vote by mail in 2005 and then completely in 2011. It's always um, responding oftentimes to the critics who, who think that the system is fraught with fraud. And uh, it's really demonstrating the security controls and the measures we have in place. And again, balancing that out with the access that our vote by mail system uh, allows. Uh, we've, we've had people from across the country asking us to, uh, to 
share the story of Washington State's um, vote by mail system. And uh, I'll tell you what's been really interesting in the last 72 hours or so is there's been a lot of attacks from the right on social media about our um, the security of our vote was system and, and that there's some sort of flaw in it. There isn't. Uh, we're in fact trying to message and educate voters on uh, how you can use and download a ballot if you need to and realizing that if you go into that system, it will suspend or hold your, your ballot that was issued. And, you know, it's a constant education campaign and that's really what we're focusing on in the Secretary of State's office. Uh, what's happening at the, at the top uh, from the White House down um, and, and certainly the things that have been intimated from uh, not being willing to, you know, vacate the office in case they, they lose uh, to, to undermining comments about vote by mail. You know, what we just continue to try to do is inspire confidence in our voters. And the best way to do that is share what they need to do to make sure their ballot gets counted. All, as you heard from, uh, from my opponent, all the ballots across the state have been mailed out now and we're seeing incredible returns already in many counties. That's exciting. We have over 500 ballot drop boxes available for people to use. Uh, they can use a mailbox if they'd like to as well with prepaid postage. And really what we're just trying to do at this point is empower voters so that they have information and uh, I find it best to combat some of the misinformation coming out of uh, D Washington, D.C. with the facts. Thank you, Secretary Weinman. Uh, Representative Tarleton, uh, if you were to become Secretary of State, how would you prepare for any challenge to the validity of our vote by mail system? I've been preparing for it uh, through this election. All of you need to really know something very important. Uh, our vote by mail system is not a national model. If it were a national model, we would be seeing voting by mail happening by mail and not standing in long lines in early voting around this country. It is not a situation where voting by mail has been adopted since the 2016 interference in our elections with the, with the collapse of voter voting rights, uh, the voter suppression efforts going on around the country since 2016. Uh, they have only accelerated this year. And I am really, I am really disappointed that we were not able to have more influence in having voting by mail adopted through this pandemic. We've had eight months almost now to prepare for what we are witnessing around the country. Uh, just today, the Supreme Court had to make a decision that allowed Pennsylvania to continue to count the votes up through Friday after election day. If vote by mail and counting the ballots after election day were a national model like it has been in this state happening that way, we wouldn't have had a Supreme Court case happen. That's what has been happening around the country while we are trying to conduct our elections through a pandemic and through attacks. And when our president is launching those attacks on the legitimacy of our elections, and when a foreign power is being invited by a president to launch them, the most important thing all of us have to do is stand up to that presidential attack and stand up to the foreign powers. I have more than 30 years as a national security expert in the intelligence community, more than 20 years with a top secret security clearance, and I can tell you this, we are not going to stop having the threats of to our elections now or in the future. These are a concerted strategy by those who want to undermine our democracy. That is why I am running for this office because the job has changed and we need a whole new approach to protection, protecting not only the elections, but protecting the integrity of the election system and the democracy we live in. Thank you, Representative Charlton. Lou? You're muted still, Lou. <laughs> I know we all do it. Someone had to do it. <laughs> Someone had to do it. It was very gracious that it was you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, this question, once again, we'll start with uh, Representative Tarleton. Washington is a model, as you mentioned, for the rest, could be a model for the rest of the country on voting by mail. And we have successfully and safely done it for years. How can Washington help the rest of the country move forward, vote by mail, and share expertise this year and beyond? So 
uh, there are several things we need to do. First, we have to focus on voter participation. We already have in this state, uh, same day voter registration, automatic voter registration. We protected uh, uh, the voting rights of Washingtonians and Native Americans in this state. We have free, free postage. We have pre-registration of 16 and 17 year olds by legislative action. What we need is a national agenda that works with the secretaries of state across the country and with the legislature the US Congress. And when our Secretary of State testified in opposition to and with great concerns about federal legislation that would have brought national automatic voter registration to the fore for this year's election, when she testified in opposition to cybersecurity funding for all states, she undermined the opportunity we had to advance automatic voter registration around the country, just as we'd adopted here. So as a Secretary of State, I will be a champion for voter participation, voter access, and elections security innovations. We need to address the fact that 1 million voters or so, 800,000 to 1 million in this state who are eligible to vote and are of voting age aren't even registered. You, it's hard to turn out the vote when you don't even have people registered before election day. So there are so many ways in which we have to advance the policies and progressive actives, activities that we have put in place here in Washington State and bring them to our colleagues around the country. And I look forward to doing that. Thank you, Representative. Same, uh, same question. Sorry, <laughs> the awkwardness. Sorry about that, Lou. Okay. Trampling over you there. No, um, you need me to re reread the question for you. I can. If not, I can let you take it. No, this one I, I remember. Um, so yes, Washington is is a leader and it does have a national model that uh, many states want to adopt. And let's face it, we have 50 states and the District of Columbia that have their own state legislatures and their own political cultures. And that is part of the, uh, the challenge. So it's about building partnerships. It's about sharing policies and procedures. And it's, a, it's about sharing those models and helping them be successful. I think that the real test is going to be in November when uh, we see how states did with expanded absentee ballots. And we did see a massive expansion of absentee balloting. And in five states, four states in the District of Columbia, we are seeing them move to complete vote by mail. So we are moving pretty dramatically as a country. And for those of you who are, are from the East Coast, you know that it's a foreign concept to think about voting by mail. Um, so you know what, what I've been trying to do is work with my colleagues and help them be successful so that uh, they, can, they can share with their state legislatures the success. And then we can continue to expand some of these great accessibility um, items that, uh, that our state has championed. Uh, just for the record, I actually wasn't in opposition to uh, to HR1, which is what my opponent was just referencing. I had concerns and I share them uh, even to this day that I'm worried about a federal takeover of our election system. One of the strengths of our system is the decentralized nature of having over 10,000 election officials like myself at the state and local level who actually oversee their elections and are accountable to their own voters. Um, in terms of cybersecurity funding, I actually signed a letter asking Congress to release the $380 million of HAVA money that was still left over to get to states to help with cybersecurity funding. And again, my opposition and concerns had more to do with the federal takeover of elections. So, you know, my job is to share our successes and that's what I, I hope to be able to do in the next four years as well. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, John. Okay, uh, final question. So as, a, as someone who does have a history of voting in North Carolina and Virginia, things are very different here. Um, even as wonderful as our system may be compared to other states, are there ways in which our state's voting system could still be improved? Are there needs, for example, to make sure that every Washington resident has the opportunity to vote with as few barriers as possible? And we'll start with uh, Secretary Wyman. Oh, absolutely. J just like cybersecurity, uh, you can always increase accessibility. You can always uh, increase uh, the opportunity to remove barriers. You know, I'm proud to tell you that depending on what you use as the voting eligible population, Washington State is registered between 87 and 93 percent of the eligible voters in our state, and I'm proud of that. 
I'm proud of uh, the engagement. I think we're going to have over 90% of our voters who are voting in the November election. That's exciting. But, uh, but mostly it's about getting into communities and working with those communities to figure out if there are barriers in those individual unique communities. For example, we've put a real emphasis uh, with the county auditors across the state to reach out to their Native American communities across the state. And we've had some just amazing successes. Uh, the vote law system now will allow us to use um, geocoded pins for addresses rather than just a street file. And what that's enabled us to do on Native American land is to actually be able to precinct people based on where their house is located or where they're living at the time, rather than uh, an address that might not conform to USPS standards. Uh, Non-traditional addresses we found were a real barrier to Native American communities, um, not having a place to receive ballots um, by mail. So uh, a great example is the Yakima Nation where the Yakima County Auditor reached out and they can use the community center there to receive ballots and they actually, the auditor put in a ballot drop box right there on, um, on that, that piece of property. So, you know, those are all ways that you can tailor it to an individual community and I think we need to do that as election officials. Um, one of the things I'm really proud of too that we have here in Washington is we have over 500 ballot drop boxes. And I'm really proud to tell you that those started in, in Thurston County when I was an election director. So it's really about creating those accessibility um, opportunities and removing barriers. Thank you, Secretary Wyman. Same question to Representative Charleston. These are issues that have been brought up by constituents and by voters throughout this entire election season. Uh, because of the pandemic and because of economic crises and people getting stuck uh, when they had gotten on a plane and gone and visited family in other states. Uh, they weren't sure that they could get back to Washington state to vote. And so uh, access issues are not just about uh, making sure there's a physical location or making sure that a ballot will come to your mailbox. Access issues are about access to the technology as much as possible online, wherever people are located to change their address, to notify their auditor that they need to have a ballot sent to a different location than what is currently on record. Uh, we have many areas where innovations in this job need to be taken seriously. We have 7.6 million people in this state. It's one of the fastest growing states in the country. We don't have an understanding of where those nearly a million voters, who are potential voters who are not even registered, don't even know why it is they aren't registered. What is the barrier to access to their right to vote? Uh, I am so proud to be endorsed by many of those organizations, by communities of color, by the by the Yakima tribe and the Colville tribe and so many of the tribes around the state because they have had so much trouble getting expanded access to the right to vote. And the legislature has taken steps since 2018, but I'm telling you, you can never rest on your laurels. You have to talk to the people to find out why it is they are not exercising their right to have a voice in our democracy. And then finally, I'll say this is another area where we have to think differently about access. We have to have the opportunity for people to be in connection with us as they are voting. So for example, one solution that we need is to do what Colorado has done. They've adopted a text messaging system where instead of having a stub where you have to go into the voting system in your county auditor or on vote law, they text you to let you know what the situation is with your ballot. They text you if there's a problem with your signature being scanned and then they let you know. So I look forward to introducing some of those innovations as your secretary of state. Uh, Representative Tarleton and Secretary Wyman, thank you both so much for participating tonight and thank you for all you both do for the residents of Washington State. Thank you thank so much. Thank you. Go vote, everybody. Go vote. <laughs> Good night.